Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Crucified for Me. Thank you so much for checking out this review. Today I'm taking a look at the Thomas Nelson King James Sovereign Collection Bible in black genuine leather. It comes in this beautiful box and it has a cool design in the front, also on the side. And in the back here, you can read about the features of this Bible. It retails for $99.99, although I think that you can get it under this price. This Bible is also available in black leather soft, in purple leather soft, and in brown leather soft. Now, the covers are a little bit different in the front. For what I could see online, especially the purple cover is kind of different, and it looks really nice and the leather soft versions of this bible of the sovereign collection king james version by thomas nelson they have an amazing price i mean i think they retail for 39.99 something like that but you can get them online right now for 31.49 um, this particular bible i believe it's in pre-order but uh, the other ones are already being sold at least on Amazon for what I could see. I'll leave some links down below and I'll also leave some links to other um, reviews of this Bible that are already available in case you're interested. Excellent reviews by excellent reviewers. And the box is a clamshell box. You open it up like this to the side Really nice black on the inside, sturdy, solid box, good presentation. I mean, it's not the thickest material that you will find in a Bible box, but it is enough to protect your Bible. So that's that. And looking at the Bible, you will see that the genuine leather has this nice grain. It's a tiny grain, but very pronounced. And I have the open Bible here. I've never reviewed this on my YouTube channel, but I do have an open Bible by Thomas Nelson in the New King James Version. And you can see the difference here. Uh, not all genuine leather Bibles are exactly the same um, by Thomas Nelson. So there is a little difference in the grain, okay? This cover is a little bit more flexible. This one is thicker. It's also a bigger and heavier Bible. You have Holy Bible in gold printed in the front. And it is perimeter stitched, as you can see. And it is nicely done. The spine is really interesting. You have a really cool, nice design on the spine. Um, you have four raised hubs, and the raised hubs actually are accompanied by these three lines of gold on the top and at the bottom of the raised hub. And then you have this ornamental nice gold design, have Holy Bible on the top, and then you have this nice, uh, focus, this nice design here in the middle or in the center then King James Version, Thomas Nelson. So this spine just looks gorgeous. I think it's really appealing and just looks kind of classical for a translation that is also very classical. It has this beautiful gold gilding. Doesn't have any color under the gold. It's just gold. Okay, see if you can see it here. It's, uh, it's not very pronounced, but 
it is nicely done and it's beautiful, adds a touch of finesse to the Bible. You have two satin ribbons, one in gold, very beautiful, and another in black. And they have a diagonal cut, nicely done, not very long, but wide and sufficient. It has a black headband and it has a black tail band. It is smite soon. So you open it up and I do believe this is a synthetic liner, but it is edge lined. Um, it's an edge lined Bible. I don't see this Bible really as a premium Bible. I believe it has a lot of features of a premium Bible. I see this Bible more in between a premium and a regular $20 Bible. Um, so it's really nice because as you will see, it's an amazing, beautiful Bible that you can get for a really interesting price. So again, edge lined, which makes the binding of this Bible more durable. You have these initial sheets of paper and you have the title page, the Holy Bible, and then a second title page, the Holy Bible, with this cool uh, red design here that you will see all throughout the Bible, really nice. And it says containing the Old and New Testaments, translated out of the original tongues, with the former translations diligently compared and revised, authorized King James Version, red letter edition, Thomas Nelson, it's very classic design and layout here, um, even for the font, really nice. Then you have the information page, not a whole lot of information, just the basics. And it is in the comfort print, uh, designed by 2K in Denmark for Thomas Nelson, specifically for the King James um, version, printed in China. And you see here the contents. So books of the Old Testament, books of the New Testament, and then you have some nice features at the end, Miracles of Jesus, Parables of Jesus Christ, One Year Reading Plan, and a Concordance. And you do have also maps in this Bible. So you have here a dedicatory to King James, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, Defender of the Faith. And it's really nice. The Old Testament title page, the Old Testament and the design in red. It's a dark red, really nice. And here you have the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And I really like how they did the introduction of the title, the first book of Moses called, and then the title, the actual title of the book, Genesis, the introduction in black and the title in red. It's a nice contrast here. You will see that contrast throughout all the Bible, this red and black interacting with each other. Really nice. So you have introductions to the books of the Bible, and as you can see, even the introductions have an ornamental drop cap, and they look just gorgeous. And here you have the text. Um, of course, these these drop caps just, you know, they just, they're awesome. It's, whenever you have this in the Bible, it, it just makes the Bible look amazing. I, I love it. I really, really like it. It is true that a lot of people, when they saw the initial pictures of this Bible that came out, they, they said, well, this is just like a Schuyler Canterbury. Well, I have one of the versions of the Canterbury I will show you, and it's not exactly the same, okay? It does, of course, bear a lot of resemblance, but it is not the same thing. So you have um, the chapter numbers in red, the verse numbers in red, the subheadings in red as well, and the text is a two-column text for most of the Bible, although the Psalms are single column. And the font is a 9.5 font. It is dark, bold, has a very good amount of space between the lines. It is highly readable. You see that you have these two horizontal lines separating the introduction from the first chapter of the book. And then you have an horizontal single line separating the text from the references and translation notes. You do have references and translation notes 
with this Bible. That's one of the differences between this Bible and the Canterbury. The Canterbury, for what I can see, only has references, does not have translation notes. You have the page numbers at the top, centered, and you have the reference uh, in a regular page at the top as well in the outer um, upper corner. There you go. And you also have these um, sentences to help you navigate where you are in the Bible text in the interior upper corner of the page. Each book starts in its own page. Beautiful, beautiful Bible. I just, just looking at it is so appealing to the eye. And as I mentioned, the Psalms are a single column and have this poetic format. Um, you don't have this for all the sections of the Bible that are actually poetry. Like, for instance, you don't have that for Job, which is right before Psalms, and it's just a regular two-column format in a verse-by-verse. -verse. This Bible is completely verse-by-verse, -verse, no paragraph format here, just verse-by-verse, -verse, which I actually really love and generally prefer in a Bible. And the fact that the verse numbers are in red really makes them stand out. Um, and they are they are big. They're not like super tiny like in other Bibles. These are big. You can see them really, really well. Proverbs is actually single column as well. But when you reach Ecclesiastes, you are back at two column format and Song of Solomon as well. So the only two books that I see with single column are Psalms and Proverbs. When you come to the New Testament, you have a title page, no pages, no paper in between. Just the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with all the words recorded therein as having been spoken by our Lord, printed in red. It is a red letter Bible. So here you have Matthew beautiful and you will see the words of Jesus are in red it is not a red that is very dark but it is dark enough it is a dark red it is a very good red I've looked through the Gospels I can't really find that much inconsistency in my copy so well done Thomas Nelson really really good job the verse numbers are in red when the text is in red they are still in red but since their size is so good um, and, and big in my opinion um, you can see them very very well and it's not only that the verse numbers are big but also they are separated from the text and not overly separated but they have a good distance from the text so they are very visible even though they are still red when you have red letter the red letter goes all the way through revelation as you can see here ta-da now when you come to the end of revelation you have the miracles of jesus christ really nice feature just one page but it has 37 miracles the parables of Jesus Christ you have 39 parables and then one year reading plan it's in two pages and this is that reading plan that you normally go um, one chapter generally speaking one chapter in the New Testament and three chapters in the Old Testament kinda like that and then you have a concordance, again, with the same cool design. I love it. I love it. It's just really nice. And also with the drop caps. It's just beautiful. And there's a lot of entries in this concordance. And what I like is that the font is not small at all. It's really still, it's not the 9.5 font of the regular text, but it's still big. It still has space between the lines. It is very readable, very easy to navigate and to use this concordance. You have around 120 pages of concordance, if I am not mistaken. And you come to the end of the concordance and you have a note regarding the type which I find very interesting in a really nice detail and then you have seven maps the Zondervan maps that normally you find at the end of many Thomas Nelson Bibles these are seven maps in eight pages okay it is in a glossy shiny paper not too shiny 
but it is glossy, it is shiny. And then you have the end sheets, and that's it. That's the end of the Bible. Now, when I first took it out of the box, I couldn't help but remember the size of the single column Premier Collection that I own. I have reviewed this Bible on my YouTube channel, and I love, I just love this Bible so much, the New King James Single Column Premier Collection. And the size is very comparable, although the single column Premier is thicker, okay? It's even thicker. Um, the the King James Sovereign Collection is a thick Bible, but the single column Premier is thicker. All right, and in terms of the paper, I also compared it with the Premier Collection paper, and even though this paper is really nice, the pages turn really well, I am not sure about the GSM of this paper, but the difference that I found was that the paper, in my opinion, has a little bit more of a rugged uh, texture than the one on the Premier Collection. The one on the Premier Collection is a little bit more smooth. That's what I find, okay? I'm not a, an expert in papers, okay? <laughs> so just bear with me here. That's what I find. Still, this paper seems to be very resistant. It is opaque, and it is a, a line-matched Bible, so... I think it's a joy to read from this Bible. Again, at this price point, I think this Bible is awesome. Now, I promised that I would compare it a little bit to a Canterbury. I don't have a regular Canterbury. I just have uh, the Wide Margin by Schuyler. And I, I love this Bible. It's a beautiful Bible. I haven't written in it because the King James is really not uh, my main translation. If this was a New King James, that would probably be a different story, but I just I just love this Bible. It's beautiful, and of course, the King James Sovereign Collection does bear a great resemblance with this, but there's differences. It's not like copy-paste, not at all. Um, let me open to the same psalm here, Psalm 109. If I show you the design of the drop cap, although, again, it's it's similar, but if you see, if you look at the design of the drop cap here in the KJV Sovereign Collection by Thomas Nelson and the design of the drop cap on the Schuyler Canterbury, you can see that the design is different. The color is different. So even though it's very, very similar, there are a few differences. The font, of course, is different. And for the references and notes, it's just, you know, you have... Translation notes with the KJV Sovereign Collection, you don't have it with the Canterbury, okay? Those are, to me, the main differences. So, the style of the font, the design of the drop caps, and the fact that the Canterbury does not have translation notes. Of course, the Canterbury is a more expensive Bible. The materials, the paper, um, the leather, you know, a lot of things in the binding of a Canterbury are different, and that's why the Canterbury is way more expensive than the KJV Sovereign Collection. But I can tell you that if I was in love with the KJV, and if I did not want to spend a lot of money or I couldn't afford um, to buy a very expensive Bible, a Sovereign Collection by Thomas Nelson to me would be the way to go, definitely. So that is it for this review. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to try to respond. I want to thank Thomas Nelson for sending this Bible to me in exchange for an honest review. And I want to encourage Thomas Nelson to continue their excellent, amazing work. I think they are putting out amazing Bibles with a really, really nice, affordable price. That's awesome. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please consider doing so. I would really appreciate it. But even if you don't, God still loves you. <laughs> and I still love you too. Whatever Bible you read, read it with faith, with prayer. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. And always remember that Jesus was crucified for you and he was crucified for me. All right, friends. Bye.